Buckle your seatbelt. It's time for another episode of the Prepper Recon Podcast. If you're near Cincinnati, start making plans to come see me at the Cincy Preparedness Expo at the Sharonville Convention Center on October 15th and 16th. Besides all of the fantastic Prepper gear available, it's a great place to learn vital survival skills. And make sure you stop by the Prepper Recon booth to say hi. Check out CincyPreparednessExpo.com for tickets and information. Whether your plan is to bug out or bug in, CampingSurvival.com has all of your preparedness needs, including fish antibiotics, long-term storage food, and and water filters. Use coupon code PREPARECON for 5% off your order at CampingSurvival.com. Today's guest is Eve Gonzalez of Trading Post in the Woods. Eve, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. It's great to be back. Um, can I, Mark, can I take a second and once again just thank all of your listeners? Um, as you know, I have been on the road traveling a lot, doing different um, events and expos and stuff, and it's just great. Um, and encouraging to have your listeners come up. I mean, they just come up and introduce themselves and let me know that they've been listening to the podcast and they really appreciate it. And I'm so grateful to know that they're they're listening and that they're working at getting prepared. And so, um, you know, as they're an encouragement to me, they're telling me I'm an encouragement to them. And so that's awesome. And I just, I love it. So if somebody is listening to this podcast and they're going to be in an area where I'm going to be at, please stop at our booth. And, um, you know, we'd love to meet you and, and get a chance to talk to you and everything. So for all those that who have come by and stopped and talked, thank you so much. Um, it really has been just a delight and an encouragement and an uplifting to know that people are really working to get prepared. And uh, everybody's going to get an opportunity to, to come out and meet you and me also, of course. Uh, anybody that's living anywhere around the Cincinnati area, which that's that's so central to so many other places like Lexington, Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, Columbus, Ohio. Um, there's a lot of big cities that are really right there in that area. And it's 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 kind of a short maybe hour, maybe two hour drive for, for a lot of people who come out, spend the day. Uh, we're going to be at the Sharonville Convention Center. That's October uh, 15th and 16th. So just about exactly a month from, from the air date of this show. So uh, come on out. Eve and I will both be there and uh, come out and say hi. Yeah, that'd be, you know what, when we were both in Atlanta, that was a lot of fun um, as well because you have so many listeners. Um, and so that was fun. It was fun to. Uh, you know, seeing them come to to see and greet you, um, and then also come in to introduce themselves to us. So that was a lot of fun. And then you're going to have your new book available in Cincinnati. I do have. I do. In fact, um, that my, my new book will be out. Um, I'll be sh I'll be doing it or doing a book signing actually in September at the Gateway Preparedness. Um, I think it's 17th, September 17th and 18th. And, um, yeah, so it's called Major Disasters Lessons Learned. And for all the people who have attended the, my training class that I do at these events, everybody walks out going, oh, do you have a book? And um, we'd love to have a book. And so I finally sat down and, and wrote this book to really help in all the different areas that people have been asking for assistance in, in their preparedness. You know, everybody is on a different, um, uh, a different path or journey in their preparedness. Some have been doing it for many years. Some are just starting. And so what I tried to do was to take everything that I've seen over 18 major disasters, um, the things that worked and the things that really don't work, the good and the bad, um, to help people as they're constructing their preparedness game plan. And um, so, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm so excited to have it done. I'm excited that we'll be able to have it out to them, you know, to people who are, are working hard. Um, it'll be a guide, um, you know, to hopefully help them if they forgot certain things, you know, that they all go, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was something I forgot. If they just don't know how to do something, um, really, I know a lot of people struggle with making their game plan. 
And and that's the biggest thing. I mean, you have to have a good game plan. If you don't have a good game plan, it's just you're in trouble. And so I a lot of times people tell you, well, have a game plan, have a game plan, but they don't go through the steps on a nice, simple way of putting one together. So hopefully I did that for them in this book um, and covered a lot of other topics as well for, for them. But I am very excited that it's going to be out because so many people have asked for it. And I felt like I was letting him down by not getting it done. So now it's done, and I I know that I have done um, the best I could to try to help people get prepared, and that's my goal. I just want to help people now so that they don't have to be a victim we see later on. And, and you're talking about game plans. I'm sure at all of these conventions you get to meet people that, that have got some uh, really great game plans and, and maybe some that have some that, that aren't so great. Now, Cincinnati, they've got a big zoo in Cincinnati. They do, don't now, they? They yeah. do. Now, how, how how's this for a game plan? You just take over the zoo – and uh and you know the animals are breeding so uh you just you eat whatever they breed and and and, and you, all you got to do is hold down the zoo is that is that a good game plan <laughs> you know that actually that is some people's game plan not necessarily in Cincinnati um but I did have somebody who came up to us in another um state and and that was they I had asked them what their game plan was and their game plan is that they will they and their team will take over the county zoo and um, they will kill anybody who tries to get in and all of the animals will become their food it's a horrible game plan awful awful Uh, (laughs) for anybody who i'm going to assume that nobody listening to the this podcast will have that as their game plan well they didn't before you came on (laughs) well Well, but I know there's some guys out there right scratch. I know there's some people out there scratching their heads right now. But what? What if I modified it? What if I brought in, some, you know, some okay. Okay. Uh, okay. ten so tons of fodder? You stop. You stop scratching your head right now, and you don't even think about that making part of your game plan. What you have to realize, though, is that there are people who are making that their game plan, and I mean, they were so sincere. They would take out they would kill anybody who is going to try to get in that zoo i of course pointed out all the the holes in that game plan and they 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 were very angry with me and are determined that's their game plan and nobody's talking them out of it even if they get assassinated um or executed okay um for doing that i mean they just really think that's a great game plan it's horrible horrible so don't make that your game plan don't even think about it it's not a good one (laughs) so um, I guess they're thinking you know big animals there's lots of animals there so they all have a food source and the animals are already enclosed so it'll be an easy target for them Um, what they're not thinking about is the size of a zoo and how do you defend that all? I mean, how do you keep all those people out? And besides that, you just can't go and take over a zoo. Um, you know, all those animals have to be fed. Um, you know, if and um, there's just no rationale behind that one. So, um, if any, if by any chance that's somebody's game plan who's listening to this, um, they need to just start over, and they should get my book that will be out on the market. And um, and get that and read it and and make a a real responsible game plan that you know they could live through uh, because you know I don't foresee anybody who goes in and takes over a zoo surviving. You know they might for a time, but there there will be consequences for the, those actions. So you and know, not a good game plan. <laughs> one of the questions you ask in your book is why people do not prepare. So uh, can you tell us why wouldn't somebody prepare if, if, if they know that uh, bad stuff's coming down the pipe? Uh, you know what? There are, in the book, I go through the seven different, there are seven different um, major reasons that we heard of why people did not prepare. Okay. And I, I take each one of those and I um, kind of like nullify the reason and give a way around it. 
So one of the reasons that a lot of people don't prepare is because their spouse isn't on board. Okay, they're like, you know, I want to prepare, but my spouse has said, no, I, I don't want to prepare. I don't want you spending any money. I don't want you doing this or that. No. And I tell people, I'm like, you know, a lot of times when you sit down with your spouse and you find out and, and discuss it, you find the truth behind it. And a lot of times the reason is, is because they don't know what to do. So it's easier to say, I don't want to do it. No, we're not going to spend any money. No way. Because they don't know what to do. Um, and also, they don't want to be bothered with it. So I tell people, find out what is the reason why your spouse doesn't want to prepare. And then um, address those reasons. And if it's because they don't know how wh where to begin, you can go, you know what, that's okay. We, we'll do it together. Um, I do know how to do it. I've been reading about it. I've been listening to podcasts on it and everything. And and we can do this together as a family. Um, if it's because they don't want to be bothered with it, look at them and go, you, you don't have to do anything. I'll go ahead. The kids and I will do it all. Okay? But if you ever want to join us and help us, that's okay. But if you don't want to, that's okay too. Um, you know, so you look at it. Um, so, so th I mean, that's one one of the big reasons that we hear about. Uh, probably one of th the largest reason um, was that they just didn't know where to begin. So a lot of people just don't prepare because they don't know where to begin. They don't know what to do. Um, they get bad advice. Um, you know, it comes out every year. Um, oh, it's hurricane season. You get this, Mark. You're... I know where you live, okay, so you get those warnings and go, oh, you have to prepare. Um, you know, you need a two- to three-day supply of food in the event a hurricane comes, okay. Well, that's not going to do you any good. Two to three days of food is not going to do you any good. Um, you know, for anybody who's who's been in any kind of disaster or responded to one, I have never, ever responded to a disaster where everything was back to normal in two to three days. Never. And so, you know, they're bombarded with all kinds of information. Um, they just don't know who to believe. They get scared off by the whole um, zombie apocalypse people, um, you know, who are like, oh, it's going to be a zombie apocalypse. And so that scares them because they don't want to be thrown into that category because they don't think a zombie apocalypse is going to happen. They're just concerned about a tornado, okay? Um, or a hurricane, or a, a fire, or a flood, and um, and so they don't know where to begin. So they don't, they don't, they they just don't do anything. Um, and um, so, you know, there are there were seven different ones that I address in that book, and I go through every single one of them. Um, I think one excuse is oh they have no place to put it, so they don't prepare. Okay, well that's just. That's just an excuse. That's not. Um, that's not a true reason. That's uh, I'm lazy and I just don't want to make <laughs> space. Um, but I address it. And you know, these are all as we've gone into disasters. Um, after it has settled down a bit, after you know people are stabilized and and they have the relief supplies and stuff, I've gone back in and I talked to the people that we've worked with, and I'm like, why? Why didn't you prepare? And I found it, you know, pretty much everybody fell into certain categories. And I think it's important for people who are preparing to understand why others aren't. Because if you can understand why others aren't, you had a, a better chance of trying to get them to do it. So if your neighbors aren't preparing, if, you know, why not? Why aren't you? Well, another excuse is, well, because the government will take care of me. Well, no, they won't. Okay, I can tell you that. Okay, I've seen, I've seen that game plan with people, and it doesn't work. Okay, all your needs are not going to be taken care of. It's not the government's job. But when you understand why they're not, you can address that. And sometimes it's just fears. People don't do it because they're afraid to be labeled. They're afraid to be laughed at. They don't know where to begin. Um, you know, so so that's why I have that in the book. I, I, I cover that so that it kind of gives them um, ammunition 
and, and tool for trying to help those around them, whether it's their own spouse or their neighbors or other extended family members who won't prepare, um, that they can, you know, see the mindsets of those who are actually in disasters and, and the reasons why they didn't prepare and be able to use that to help those who have the same mindset now to change it now before it's too late. Yeah, the 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 banking on the government to take care of you. I think I think I'd go with uh, taking over a zoo. <laughs> right. I probably I I probably yeah. bank on a I'd probably bank on a, a magic unicorn fairy before yeah, yeah. before well, the U.S. But, government. Yeah, but you know what? It's not when people understand the different roles that the different agencies play. It really is not FEMA's job to provide for all your all of your needs and it, it's really not the government's either they put out psas um, all the time telling people to get prepared they've got the the go bag one with, yeah, the, with the woman like flipping through the air and and there for a while they had uh they had some sort of tongue and cheek ones about the zombie apocalypse i missed the zombie apocalypse one <laughs> so, they, they were posters uh, <laughs> they weren't they weren't like uh television oh, okay. ads but they okay. were they were posters but then there were they had the TV ads with the the bug out bag ones. Okay. For the TV ads. Okay. And then they've had some they've had some radio yeah, well, ones. They're trying to tell. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. The dollar's lost over 90% of its purchasing power since 1971. Silver on the other hand has proven to be a very stable form of wealth preservation over the years. And where do you buy silver? Silver.com, of course. Silver.com offers fantastic prices on gold and silver. Check out silver.com today. Trading Post in the Woods is ran by veteran crisis responders who know how important it is to be prepared. They specialize in comprehensive natural survival remedy kits, preparedness and homesteading supplies, as well as skills training. Visit them online today at tradingpostinthewoods.com. Well, you know, I remember Katrina. If you really, if people think back before Katrina hit land, okay, the president was on TV. President Bush was on TV telling people, please evacuate. This is the worst hurricane that you will have, you know, the country has experienced or it's forecasted to be. You need to evacuate. Okay, county agencies, everybody was on TV telling people, you have to evacuate. And people didn't evacuate. And then who were they mad at? They were mad at the government. Okay, well, it wasn't the government's fault they didn't evacuate. I'm sorry. It's personal responsibility. They put out an evacuation order for a purpose because they knew danger was coming that the way to those people, and they were warning the people to exit, but it didn't become their job to evacuate everybody. It didn't become their job to feed everybody it, or clothe everybody or house everybody. It's not their job. It's each person's responsibility to provide for themselves, to have a game plan, to evacuate if an emergency evacuation goes out, to do the things that you need to do to take care of you and your family. It isn't anybody else's job. And that's what people have to understand. And where this came about, that people truly believe that the government's going to take care of them and all their supplies are going to be provided for them and they're going to get all this housing and stuff, that's not, I mean, it's not, okay, I mean, that it really is not their job. So, uh, but a lot of people, unfortunately, think that. You know, so... Um, I have seen the government step in and try to do things, but it's not, uh, it's certainly not a game plan I would want to have. And it's not one we do have. It's not even one that would not, that would be way, way, I, the zoo would be way down on the bottom and so would the government. Okay. Uh, both of them are just very bad game plans for anybody to count on. I tell people if supplies come into your area, great. It's a bonus, um, but you should not be expecting it. Don't expect anything. And a lot of disaster preparedness books are written from sort of a, a speculative viewpoint, meaning that the the authors are just uh, sort of making up scenarios in their mind, um, right? As to what's going to happen, and and that's great if you're a fiction author like me. But uh, you're writing this from a, a position of experience. How many major disaster zones have you worked in? Eighteen. Okay, so I have 18 uh, different major disasters behind me, 
And um, I guess, you know what, I do come from a different perspective. And there are times when I have read, you know, I get all of these magazines and stuff because I want to see what people are telling people to do. And I can tell those who have really been in a disaster and those who have not because those who have not come up with some really bad advice for people, and it makes me cringe. And that was another reason why I wanted to get the, this book out to them, was because I do have a knowledge and an insight that a lot of people don't have, because I'm coming from a standpoint of, of, of reality. I've seen it, okay? I've seen it. I've been there. I've seen what these people have had to go through. Um, I've seen the mistakes they've made, and some of them made such bad mistakes, it cost them their lives or the life of a loved one. And, um, you know, you can't you can't ever undo that. You can't, that horrible mistake that, you know, some people have made, they can't ever undo it. They can't go back in time. They can't put, you know, just say, I want to do over. It doesn't happen. You are, when a disaster happens, you have what you have and the skills that you have and the decisions that you make. And if you make a wrong decision or you haven't planned well, you're in trouble potentially, and it can be deadly. And, um, you know, so when I when I read different magazines and I find some really lousy information, I've even gone out and attended other people's events, and I sit there going, oh, my goodness, you've got to be kidding me. That's horrible advice. Um, and yet I'm one voice I, I at times, you know, and, and then I, I, I group with you because you have a head on your shoulders and and, and you are trying to guide people in a, in a right direction. And, you know, I, I, I haven't read anything that you put out that I would go, oh, that's horrible advice. Because, you know, if I did, I'd be telling you, Mark, what are you thinking? <laughs> okay. But I haven't read anything like that from you. Um, you know, and there are some others out there that are really trying hard. And I think for the other people, um, you know, maybe they're trying to do something to get people to do something. And yet, because they've never been in a disaster, they've never responded to a disaster, they've never seen a crisis firsthand, they don't understand the panic mode that people's brains get into and stuff. They just they put out some bad info. And so I always tell people, you know, look at the source of where it's coming from. Even when you're buying stuff, if you're buying stuff, you ask people, you know, before you spend your hard-earned money, have you ever been in a disaster yourself? If the answer is no, you go, have you ever responded to a disaster? If the answer is no, then you ask them, what qualifies you then to sell me what it is that you're wanting me to buy? And, um, you know, some people are just out trying to make a living, and others have done a lot of research. Um, you know, some people, you know, when you really dig deep into what and who they are, you will know the truth. But, um, you know, if you're spending, you know, thousands of dollars, make sure you really check it out um, instead of, you know, spending it where you spending that kind of money and then finding it, you just bought junk. So um, it does. I um, mean, you know, I do come from a different perspective, and I guess that's where my passion comes from. I'm tired of dead bodies and I'm tired of victims and I just want people to be equipped. Um, I want them to be equipped. I want them to have choices now so that they can, while it's calm and life is fairly normal, they can make good, clear, conscious decisions and make good game plans and buy the proper things that they need instead of being an event has happened, they're in panic mode, now they're just trying to survive, and they make really lousy choices. So, um, But I love the scenarios, and I think the scenario books that, that, like, that you put out are great because the, a person has to um, prepare their mind, and a lot of people forget about that in disaster preparedness. They don't think about the mindset, and... Um, that's another whole section. I mean, it's a big section in my book um, because I talk about, you know, preparing yourself for the loss of a loved one. Okay, you mentally prepare for that now. You know, Mark, I know you love your wife. 
imagine that your wife or an event happens and your wife dies. Do you have your game plan all in place for what you will do and how you will carry on? And it's important, you know, we're able to easily go, oh, yeah, yeah, I've got it. I've got one. But when I sit down and I talk about it with my husband and we have made our game plan, you know, I cry. I mean, I cry because I love my husband and I don't want to ever see that happen. I I pray it never does. I don't want to lose one of my children. I don't want to lose my spouse. I prefer not to die going through an event, okay? But I need to know that, you know, that they'll be okay and stuff. And, And you look at not just that, but you have to address fear, Okay, you have to address fear. You have to address, um, you know, what are you going to do with all the people who you're going to see suffering? Um, how are you going to handle that one? Will you be able to do it um, from a, a mental perspective, um, you know, and still be able to function? So there is um, there's a lot that you have to prepare for mentally um, in a disaster. And a lot of people just, they're not, and it's something that, you need to. I mean, think think about it this way, too. I mean, you're walking along trying to get from point A to point B, and your wife dies. Okay? She dies right there. What are you, what are you going to do? Are you mentally prepared to kiss your wife and keep on going, knowing that if you don't, you will, you may perish, too? Um, and most people, the answer who's listening to this is going to be no way. No, you're not prepared. You're not prepared to leave your child laying alongside the road somewhere to quick dig a little grave and bury them and keep on going, Um, you know, with no time to mourn. Because depending on what the crisis might be, you may have to just keep right on going. And are you mentally prepared for that? So, I mean, you know, I try to throw out in the book and even in my classes and And um, I know you and I have talked about this before, Um, you know, thinking, really preparing your mind so that you can put those scenarios. And that's where your books are helpful. Um, All the scenario books that you can get, I advise people to read. Um, You have to realize that, you know, it's, it's, they're not true stories, but what if they were? Okay. It's giving your brain um, ideas. You know, now I've read some scenario books that I'd go, oh, my goodness, they're just going to die if they do that, okay, in reality. um, But there's so much good in those stories that uh, to allow people to see the bad side of human nature and the good side of human nature. I've seen them both. I've seen the really, really ugly, and I've seen the really, really good. And you have to be prepared for both because most of us think the really good will reign, and unfortunately, as time goes on, it's the really ugly that can reign, and you have to be able to prepare for it and be ready for it and be ready to deal with it. So, um, so you know, I hope people are buying your books, okay, and, and reading those scenarios where you have the scenarios and the ones that you have come up with. Mine is, it's reality. This is what I've seen. But if you take the two of them and you put them together, you have a a much better foundation, I think. You know, I'm working to build a foundation uh, for people, and then from there they they need to keep on going. You don't want to stop. Um, I can't put everything in the book that I've seen. In fact, uh, my final thoughts in the book were, I know that as soon as I send this to the editor, there's going to be things that I'll be going, oh, I should have put this in there. Oh, I should have done that. Um, And then I guess there'll be another book. (laughs) So... um, but, yeah, the scenarios, like, you know, are really, very important. So if they, you know, if people listen to this, you're just trying to put together your kits and um, you think you've come up with a game plan, start reading those scenario books to see how well your game plan would hold up, hold up in the scenario like that. Um, and realize, you know, you have to work through it. If somebody, Mark, you could write a book on a team that decides to take over Zoo um, as their game plan. <laughs> I was thinking okay. of that. There's, there's, a, there's yeah, a TV show on CBS. It would CB- make a great book. There's a, okay. There's a TV, they, TV show on, on CBS right now. It's called Zoo, and it's like the animals are uh, – I are have seen that. They're starting to attack humans. <laughs> 
And so you could right. do it, and that's their survival plan. And then it's like a a, a zombie a, a, a apocalypse, basically, where the the animals turn into well, zombies. Well, I don't and... know. I, I think you should should write a book on this group that you know makes some disaster happen, and they decide they take over the zoo, and the animals don't go crazy. But those people are certainly going. How on earth do they defend that? But at the end of the book, everybody who took over the zoo has to die. Yeah. Or I have to look at you and go, now that was not realistic. Nobody should have lived, okay? Um, unless they've all been, you know, taken off to jail um, and stuff and will have to stand trial for their crime of what they did. Okay, but it, it could make a fascinating book. Um, but, you know, when people are reading scenarios, you have to look and, and kind of judge it and go, is that, uh, is that a possible scenario? And if it is, then you can take your game plan and go, how would my game plan hold up in a scenario like that? What holes do I have in, in my game plan if a scenario like that happens? And start filling in the holes. If it's a not a realistic scenario, well, then don't waste your time on it. Okay? But if, if you think that that's a viable one, then where, how would yours hold up? What what difficulties do you see happening? What complications with the plan that you made? Hi, Preppers and Patriots. That's the end of the first half of my conversation with Eve Gonzalez of Trading Post in the Woods. Tune in next week for the rest of the show. In the post-apocalyptic thriller, The Economic Collapse Chronicles by best-selling author Mark Goodwin, America is on the cusp of financial annihilation. Matt and Karen Baer thought they were prepared for anything, but can they survive a total collapse of the economic system? If they want to live through the crisis, they'll have to think fast and move quickly. In a world where all the rules have changed and savagery is law, those who hesitate pay with their lives. The Kindle edition of the Economic Collapse Chronicles is now available as a box set. Buy your copy at Amazon.com to